can be difficult to know where to begin. You may not realize it, but you are sacred. Add your voices! What's the difference between a community and a cult? The Chant looks to explore this neglected topic and throws in some cosmic horror for good measure. But does it work? Let's find out. I'm Adam Scott, and this is The Chant. Released in late 2022 for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series consoles, The Chant is the first game developed by new studio Brass Token. Creative director Mike Scupa said this about Brass Token's game-making philosophy. We're taking an off-kilter approach to familiar themes and creating truly unique gaming experiences. The Chant doesn't feel like it's taking any shortcuts. It's clear the developers tried hard to offer an experience that appeals to both players of more passive games like Amnesia or players of more systems-oriented games like Resident Evil. The result is something all its own, and that starts with the story. You play as Jess, who's struggling to deal with the loss of her sister. The grief, the guilt, the pain lingers, ever-present like a weight always pulling her down. Jess's childhood friend Kim offers her a lifeline. Join her for a retreat on an island. It's like a spiritual self-help camp, offering a series of treatments firmly at the crossroads between science and spirituality. As a skeptic, Jess doesn't believe in this type of thing, but she's desperate, so she takes her up on the offer. And soon we're off to a beautiful and tranquil island. Tyler, the spiritual leader, and a handful of other attendees are also looking for peace, possibly redemption, and answers to their own complex issues. That makes you a good friend to us. During one of the group's routine chants, things go wrong. Very wrong. Kim panics, the attendees disperse, and at first, we're not sure exactly what's real. Now you're on your own. Unfortunately for Jess, this picturesque paradise hides dangers beneath its seemingly serene surface, and it's up to her to discover what lurks in the shadows and ultimately discover the truth. There's an interesting story about redemption gained in spite of darkness that surrounds everyone and is fed to you in bite-sized chunks that become fuller the more you explore. Oddly enough, this could be considered an open-world game, but it's very different from what you're picturing in your head. You can freely navigate the paths that'll have you crisscrossing the island. At times, you'll hit a dead end that'll have you either backtrack to find an item or solve a puzzle to progress. Like finding various fuses to light darkened areas, parts to start a machine, or keys to remove padlocks. The most common puzzles involve finding these geometric shapes that when put together form a symbol that can then open specific doors. There isn't a huge map littered with fast travel points or millions of collectibles or anything like that. In fact, there isn't a map at all. You'll navigate the island by following clues and using the trail markers. And this works surprisingly well. Not only was I mostly able to traverse the island without getting too lost, but I found that I had to pay much more attention to my surroundings to know where I was and where I was going, which added a sense of immersion. Although the island isn't huge in scale, there's plenty of areas you'll visit, all home to the freaks and monsters that want you dead. Thankfully, the Chant has a full combat system and a variety of enemies to fight off as you find your way around the island. From plant-based creatures of the gloom to deranged cultists, each of the enemies Jess encounters has distinct weaknesses you'll want to exploit. Various materials scattered across the island can be used to craft different weapons based around New Age spirituality, sage, salt, crystals, oils, and fire. Witch sticks can be used against gloom-based foes, while sage sticks are effective in swarms of flies, and the fire lash will burn cultists. Oils can be thrown for trapping and causing damage, and salt will briefly stun enemies, allowing you breathing room when feeling overwhelmed or give you a window to escape. You'll use light and heavy attacks and can dodge enemy attacks, but be careful. If you get too frantic, you'll actually stumble and fall. Don't forget that you're a normal person, so sometimes it's better to get the hell out of there than to stand your ground and fight. 
you'll come across research notes and film reels which fill in the broader story and even find research on the monsters to help you better fight them. There are three key stats that you'll be managing, mind, spirit, and body. Body is the representation of physical health, which is pretty straightforward. Spirit is like mana, which powers Jess's special prism abilities, such as manipulating time to control crowds or even dealing more heavy damage. You can think of mind similar to sanity and can be reduced when Jess is stuck in the dark or experiences random attacks to her mind. Let your mind drop too low and Jess will have a panic attack, preventing you from using weapons until you find safety. While it sounds frustrating, this is balanced rather well and only adds to the tension. By finding lavender, ginger, and spirit caps across the island, you'll refill these gauges. Finding prismic crystals will allow you to upgrade certain abilities, such as gaining more health or mind when using resources, or holding more of it in stock. Your actions in the game also allow you to develop each of these three traits, though the system is hit and miss. Dialogue choices, using recovery items, and even picking up collectibles will contribute to one of your stats. It's a good idea in theory, but with so many things contributing to each of these stats, and with these changes only having minor effects on the gameplay, it feels pointless and doesn't change much beyond the ending. She was trying to kill me. I swear. For completionists, you'll need to finish the story at least three times, each run focusing on one of the three stats, mind, body, or spirit. Since so little changes in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay beyond the ending, it's hard to recommend this outside of achievement or trophy hunting. That being said, your first run will take between six to eight hours to complete, so it's a short and sweet experience to replay. All in, it took me about 20 hours to get the Platinum Trophy. The chant isn't backed by AAA money, but the visuals are often quite eye-catching. The environments are detailed and interesting to explore. I absolutely love the idea of the gloom, and the way it fills each of the scenes it seeps into with vibrant, giallo-esque colors. I can see the music. The enemy designs are creepy and inventive, looking just the right amount of wrong to get under your skin. The soundtrack is similarly fantastic, throwing back to some of the best horror films of the 70s, with some great electro rock and psychedelic tinges. On the other hand, some of the lip syncing is off, and at times the character movements feel jittery, like the transition animations are missing between different actions. These are minor gripes, however, and didn't detract from the overall experience. In the end, I was pleasantly surprised by the presentation. While the chant has a lot of the hallmarks of survival horror, and I've seen most reviewers use that term, I'd say this is more of a horror-themed adventure game. Think of something like the Dark Pictures Anthology or Until Dawn, but with combat instead of quick time events. While you do collect and use resources, there isn't much in the way of resource management. You aren't making decisions on what to take with you and weighing that against the dangers you anticipate. Without the risk reward balance, it doesn't have one of the key hallmarks for the survival horror genre. This isn't a good or bad thing, it's just another point of consideration for the game. Brass Token wanted to create a unique experience by turning the familiar on its head, and I think they've mostly succeeded with the chant. Is it the scariest game I've ever played? No. But it does a great job of building a real sense of place and atmosphere that sticks with you better than most games in years. And while so much of the chant is totally unique, genre fans will appreciate the nods to the best thrillers of the 70s and 80s. The acting and off-kilter characters make Jess's plight feel incredibly desperate, while the story remains gripping throughout. The gloom was a smartly implemented enemy that led to some tense encounters. Even without the polish of a AAA game, the griminess of the island acted as an eerie backdrop to what first seemed like paradise, and forces you to ask what you'd do if your community was not what it seems. How do I look? Like one of us. Kim, doesn't this all feel a little bit culty? All right, now that you've heard my thoughts on the chant, I'd love to hear yours. Also, what's another horror game that's flown under the radar? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. Now, if you liked the video, hit like and subscribe. And if you want a great survival horror game, check out my video right here. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.